Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India respect to regression analysis. In my last lecture, we have discussed the entire structure of bivariate econometric modeling. So, basically it is divided into two parts. First part associate with the association between two variables and in the second case, we like to know the association along with the causal relationship. So, now in the first case, there are several techniques, variance, covariance and correlation and other side there is a technique called regression. The difference, difference is that in the first case, particularly with respect to variance, covariance and correlation, the objective is to measure the degree of association between the two variables. However, in the case of regression, we are interested for two things. First, the association between two variables and second, the cause and effect relationship between two variables. So, basically bivariate, bivariate econometric modeling divided into two parts and that is with respect to degree of association and second case it is correlation. Okay. So, we have standard techniques called as a variance covariance and correlation. Here the standard technique is called as regression. So, now the starting point of this particular structure is that the system must have two variables. Okay. So, let us take two variables here x represents x 1 up to x n and y represents y 1 up to y n. All right. So, now variance covariance in fact very similar. Variance means we have to track the association with the same variable. For instance, we have to X, uh, correlate with x upon x or y upon y. Okay? So, this is what it is called as a variance. So, now if we correlate x y or y x, then it is called as a covariance. Okay? Now, similarly, if we integrate x with y uh, or y with x, then it is also called as a correlation. Yes, there is a small difference between covariance and correlation, but the objective of the particular study is very much similar because we try we try to know the degree of association between the two variables. So, here the difference is only with respect to its mathematics only, nothing else. So, now in the case of regressions, we like to know the cause and effect relationship between the two variables. In my last lecture, we have discussed the detailed structure and status of covariance and correlation. However, we have not discussed anything about the regression. 
So, today we will discuss detail about regression and we have to compare how it is different or you can say advanced to variance, covariance and correlations. One thing is very clear regression you can say very much depend on the variance, covariance and correlation until unless you have complete knowledge on variance, covariance and correlation you cannot go for regression technique. Let me explain what is all about regression. Okay. So, now I have already discussed the structures vibrate econometric modeling. So, the this is here association rule and this is here causality rule. Okay. So, now we will take the case of causality. So, now causality is nothing but it is technique called as a regression. Okay. So, now what is first question is what is all about regression? Regression is to predict or forecast a particular variable with respect to a given variable. In other words, it is the average association between two variables, keeping in mind two objectives. First objective degree of association between the two variables and second objective is to know cause and effect relationship between the two. So, that means, if there are two variables whether x causes y or y causes x. In fact, in the time series modeling we have very interesting component called Granger causality. So, there are three different options if x causes y and vice versa is not true it is called as a unidirectional causality. Again y causes x and not vice versa then again it is called as a unidirectional causality. If x causes y and y causes x, then it is called as a bidirectional causality. However, we are not going detail about the time series modeling right now, we will discuss detail in the later part. So, in the meantime, we have to discuss what is the entire structure of regression, means we like to know what is the basics of regression modeling. Okay. So, now regression is the average relationship between two variables. So, now the starting point of the game must have two variables. So, let us take two variables here. So, now regression can be obtained if there are two variables say y and x. So, now if there are two variables, so then we are very much interested for cause and effect. So, that means there are two different situations here y on x and x on y. Okay. So, now let us start with the y on x then here this sides x on y. So, this is the component y on x is called as a regression line y on x and x on y means it is a regression line from x to y. Okay. So, now if it is a y on x or x on y how is the setup or structures. So, let us start with the here. So, if it is y on x, so what is the shape of regressions? The shape of regression is simply mathematically we can represent y minus y bar is equal to b y x into x minus x bars. Okay. In the case of x on y, the regression uh, equation is like this x minus x bar equal to b x y upon y minus y bars. Okay. So, now certain things here uh, you have to very clear. First thing we know x is a variable, first variables, this is x is the first variable. Okay and y is the second variables. So, now I have not mentioned whether first variable it means it may be dependent, it may be independent, second variable it may be dependent, in, uh, it may be dependent. Now, if I will say y on x then obviously, it is y dependent and x independent. The moment I will say x on y then obviously, it is x dependent and y independent. Okay. So, now x and y are two variables, x bars the average average of x okay, mean of x, then y bar is nothing but average of average of y. Okay. So, now we get to know y y bar x x bar, then we have no idea about b y x and b x y. So, b y x represents a regression coefficient it is represented as regression coefficients. 
regression coefficients coefficients on y 2 x on y 2 x. Okay. So, this is for v y x. Similarly, we have v x y, v x y represents regression on regression uh, regression coefficients regression coefficients uh, uh, coefficients on x y. So, this leads to here only. Okay. So, now the situation is very clear. So, we have two regression uh, two regression coefficients first is x on y and second is y on x. So, now if it is x on y the regression equation is x minus x bar into b x y into y minus y bar and if it is y on x then y minus y bar equal to b y x into x minus x bar. So, there are two regression lines. So, obviously, we have two regression equations. So, now we like to know what is the structure and setup of b y x and b x y. Okay, b x y is a mathematical coefficient it is called as a regression coefficient and b x y also regression coefficient from x to x to y and for b y x it is y to x. So, now we like to know what is exactly b y x and what is the uh, uh, what is exactly b x y. So, now that means we like to know what is the mathematics or statistics in inside b x y and b y x. Let me highlight here what is all about this issue. So, now, so let us start with the first one equation y minus y bar is equal to b y x into x minus x bar. So, this is regression on y upon x, okay? y upon x. So, now here b, o, b y x represents r sigma y by sigma, sigma x. What is r here? So, r here represents correlation coefficient are represent here correlation coefficient okay and sigma y represents standard deviations standard deviation standard deviation of x variables okay then sigma x represents standard standard deviation standard deviation of y this is standard uh, standard standard deviation of x and this is standard deviation of y. Okay. So, now b y x obviously we have already represent this is regression coefficients regression coefficients regression coefficients of y on x. All right. So, now what is r? So, in the last lecture we have discussed what is r. r is basically correlation coefficient which is again derived through proper structure. So, now here uh, 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 this is you know this is first equation, this is second equation. Now, third is r equal to covariance of x y by sigma x into sigma y. This is conditional equation third. Okay. So, now we have the original uh, regression equation is y minus y bar equal to b y x into x minus x bar followed by b x y equal to r upon sigma y by sigma x and uh, again r equal to covariance of x y by sigma x and sigma y. So, now we like to know what is uh, sigma x, what is sigma y and what is covariance of x y. In fact, we have already discussed all these details. So, now sigma x is nothing but summation x minus x bar whole square divided by n and sigma y represents summation y minus y bar whole square divided by n. Okay. So, now we covariance. So, covariance of x upon y is equal to summation uh, x y summation x y by n. Okay. It is nothing but summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by n. Okay. So, this is this is the regression coefficient, this is correlation coefficient, this is standard deviation of x, this is standard deviation of y and this is covariance of x y. So, now if we summarize all these details, then obviously ultimately b o b y x is nothing but covariance of sig covariance of uh, x y by sigma x into sigma y. All right, 
into sigma y y sigma x. So now sigma y sigma y cancel. So it is nothing but covariance of x upon y divided by sigma square x that is nothing but variance of x. So now this covariance of x y covariance of x y basically its covariance of x y covariance of x y is nothing but summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by n. Okay. So now again b y x is equal to summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar by sigma square x sigma square x okay sigma square x so it is sometimes written as summation x y by summation x square this is divided by n so obviously summation x y by n and cancel at the moment you will take sigma square because sigma square sigma square equal to summation x square by n okay so summation x square by n all right that means standard deviation of x is nothing but summation x x x square by n all right so now this is b y by x so now if we simplify then it is nothing but y minus y bar equal to summation x y by summation summation x square into oh, x minus x bar okay so this is the question of y to x regression equation so now come down to other part of this problem so that is x on y okay so now for x on y then the regression equation is nothing but x minus x bar is equal to b x y into y minus y bar so as usual b x y is equal to r sigma x upon sigma y r sigma x upon sigma y so now it is nothing but covariance of x upon y by sigma x into sigma y multiplied by sigma x by sigma y so sigma x sigma x cancel ultimately covariance of x y divided by sigma square y so now if we further simplify then it is something summation x y by summation y squares all right so this is the this is the final uh, coefficient for b b x y so ultimately the regression equation will be x minus x bar is equal to summation x y by summation y square into y minus y bar so this is the second equation on x on y obviously so we have two variables so corresponding to two variables y and x we have two regression equation y on x and x on y for y on x the regression equation is y minus y bar into b y x into x minus x bar and for x on y it is nothing but x minus x bar into equal to bx bx y upon y minus y bar so now b y x and b x y is the regression coefficients so now we have to see how these two regression coefficients are integrated to each other and how it is very useful or you can say very structured in the bivariate econometric modeling so let me explain here there are various properties here which associated with the regression coefficient correlation coefficients covariance and variance ultimately in this bivariate bivariate a, a data, data analysis or bivariate econometric econometric modeling so we are very much interested about variance covariance correlations and the regression okay so now so we have we have two series y minus y bar equal to b y x into x minus x bar and another side x minus x bar equal to b x y upon y minus y bar okay so now this is equation 1 this is equation 2 so now we like to know how they are integrated to each other so that means is there any relationship between these two equations or 
two regression coefficients and how these two regression coefficients are integrated with the correlation coefficients the two variance covariance and it's you can say structure so now let's start with here view x y so one standard property is that the geometric mean of two regression coefficient equal to correlation coefficient so that is what is geometric mean so now v y x into v x y for these two coefficients regression coefficient will be like this 0 0.5 all right so what is v y x and what is v x y it's already mentioned so v y x is nothing but r sigma y by sigma x multiplied by r sigma x upon sigma y so sigma x sigma x cancel sigma y sigma y cancel this is to the power 0 0.5 so it is simply r squares upon square root so this means r so now the physical interpretation is that the geometric mean of two regression coefficient is the correlation coefficient so that means if we have two regression coefficients then we can get to know the correlation coefficient that is simply the geometric mean of byx and bxy all right so now this is second second property the arithmetic mean of two regression coefficient is greater than two correlation coefficient what is arithmetic means now for arithmetic mean bxy and byx is nothing but bx plus byx by greater than equal to correlation coefficient okay so now how is that structure so it is nothing but r sigma x by sigma y plus r sigma y by sigma x greater than equal to 2r okay so now r r r cancel so sigma square x plus sigma square y greater than equal to 2 sigma x into sigma y so this implies sigma x minus sigma y whole square should be greater than equal to 0 so it is meaningful statement so that means we can justify that the arithmetic mean of two regression coefficient should be always greater than equal to correlation coefficient by any chance it cannot be less than that all right so this is the second issue of the e association between regression coefficients and correlation coefficients third property here you know uh, r depends upon b y x and b x y all right so correlation coefficient simply represents or you can say functional association between b y x and b x y so now it's a very interesting if r greater than 0 then b y x obviously greater than 0 b x y greater than 0 so that means for if b y x and b x y positive then r must be positive then if r less than 0 then b y x less than 0 b x y less than 0 okay or if r equal to 0 then b y x or you can say v x y is equal to 0 so that means both regression coefficients and correlation coefficients are usually same sign by any chance it cannot be different For instance if regression coefficients are negative then obviously correlation coefficient will be negative because it is the it is the geometric mean of the two so obviously both should be positive so that we will get the positive correlation coefficient and both should be negative to get the negative correlation so in in one instance v x y positive and in the other instance v x y should be positive it cannot be other way around so this is how this third property is all about between regression coefficients and correlation coefficients so now you must be very a, a very much 
concerned about this the a coefficient of correlation and the coefficients of regressions. So, now we have already mentioned that G, um, uh, uh, correlation coefficient always lies between minus 1 and plus 1. All right. So, now obviously R square lies between 0 to 1. Okay. So, this is correlation coefficient and this is the square of correlation coefficient. In fact, in the regression analysis, we will go deep into the regression. Obviously, the R square component is a very, very important factor, means it has lots of beautiness. So, we will discuss detail what is all about R square and how it is very useful for entire regression issues. So, in the meantime, I like to know it is simply R square that means square of correlation coefficient. And if we go into D, then the R square represented as a coefficient of determination and that is the measure of goodness fit. In the first lectures when I mentioned about the structure of econometric modeling, I have discussed the entire setup. So, how you start with econometric modeling and how you have to end with econometric modeling. In the very beginning, I have mentioned the first starting point is to define the problem that you have to borrow from the theory, then you have to transport the uh, uh, theory into mathematical form of the model, then you have to transport the mathematical form of the model to statistical form of the model, then we have to uh, investigate that models and for that you need to have informations that is what we call data. So, the moment you have a data then you have to apply the statistical techniques to or you can say computational process and get the estimated model. So, now once you have estimated estimated model in, in your front and obviously, the first assignment is to check the reliability before you uh, before you like to go for forecasting or other issues. So, now I, I clearly mentioned during that times that so far as the reliability check is concerned, we have three different specifications, three, three different test that is you can say goodness fit test, then specification test and out of sample prediction test. And goodness fit test is one of the issue here only. So, now what we are talking about R square is nothing but the goodness fit test. So, the goodness of a goodness fit of that particular model depends upon the value of R square. If the R square value is very close to 1, then obviously the fit of the model is better. If the R square value is close to 0, then the model cannot be better fitted. That means, if the goodness fit is not means reliable, so it cannot give any indication positive indication, then obviously we cannot go for forecasting. That means, we have to apply go back to your second stage. So, the way we have structure or given the detailed structure about the flow chart. So, now according to we have to proceed. So, now uh, by any chance if R square is close to 1, then that means model is reliable, then uh, you can go for forecasting and that is you can say observe or that can be done with the basis of only goodness speed test. So, now here the point is that if r is a in between minus to 1, then obviously coefficient determinants limit is 0 to 1. So, now if the value of correlation coefficient is minus 1, it is positive means perfectly negatively associated with each other and if it is equal to 1, then it is positively associated to each other and that is perfect positive correlation and this is perfect negative correlation. So, in between 0 must be there. So, 0 means no correlation with between the two. So, that means, if the r, r value is 0, then obviously, then the causality factor will not come into the picture, the, because uh, if you will take any regression equations y on x or x on y, then obviously, b y x and b x y is the factors. So, the moment you have a, a, a r coefficient 0, then obviously, the, the entire issue b y x and b x y also 0. So, as a result, b y uh, means regression equation y on y x and x on y can be observed. It means, it uh, from you know correlation coefficient itself it will give indication whether there is any cause and effect relationship, because uh, uh, it is the essential point whether you have to proceed further. That means, uh, if you are starting from the variance, covariance, correlation and regression, then it is just like a step, step by step process. So, now if the correlation uh, gives 0 result, then obviously no point to go for regression. The reason is that because reg reg regression is the advanced technique, it is very time taking and also mathematically very complex. 
So, the moment you will get r equal to 0, then you can stop there. It's no point to discuss about the cause and effect relations because the relation itself is a no meaning at all. So, now if the correlation coefficient minus 1 to 1, then obviously coefficient of determination 0 to 1. So, now so accordingly the goodness of fist will give the you know forecasting results. If it is close to 1, then it is better forecasted. If it is close to 0, then there is no question of forecasting. But if it is close to 0, then it is less reliable for forecasting. So, now corresponding this particular uh, setup, so we have another property is associated with the regression coefficient and correlation coefficient. Structure is that here uh, we, we know in the correlation uh, structures, the correlations is a very symmetric in nature. So, that means r y x equal to r x y for instance like this we have two variables x and y. So, that means we can correlate x upon y or we can correlate y upon x. If we really correlate x on y, it is called as a r x y and if we really correlate y on x y x, then it is called as a r y x. So, that means the fundamental theorem is that r x y is equal to r y x. So, that means it is simply symmetric in nature. It is simply symmetric in nature. Okay? And one of the other important point is that R x y is equal to R u v, u and v are another variables which is the a other way representation of x y. For instance, u can be x minus a by h and v can be x minus b by k. So, that means it is represented as the representation coefficient independent of change of origin and scale. However, in the case of regression, it is not the issue. In the case of regression, it is change of origin, but not the scale. The reason is that v y v y x is simply summation x y by summation y squares. Okay. So now, if x y x represents here x minus x bar, and y represents here y minus y bar, and y square represents x minus x bar into y minus sorry x into x minus so y minus y bar into y minus y bar. Okay. So, now if we simplify here then x minus x equal to h u plus a and a here b equal to y minus b in fact y equal to k b plus b. So, now x minus x bar is nothing but h into u minus u bar and y minus y bar represents k into y minus uh, v minus v bars. Okay. So, obviously, so now if we simplify this, then summation x y is nothing but uh, h into k uh, summation u v divided by summation u square means it is simply a k square into sigma uh, summation uh, v squares. Okay. So, now this k k cancel then ultimately we have the factor h by k into summation summation u v by summation v squares. So, that means it is clear cut indication is that regression coefficient is independent of origin, but not the scale. Similarly, we can also uh, you can make a verification for d x y. So, the point is that correlation coefficient is independent of change of origin and scale, while regression coefficient is change of origin, but not the scale. All right. So, this is the case of uh, regression issue and correlation issue. So, now there is another point you can hear and note down on this when r equal to 0, then obviously the two lines, two regression lines are perp perpendicular to each other. perpendicular to each other. Okay. So, if r equal to 1 means if the correlation coefficient is equal to 1, then it means two lines are coincide, two lines are coincide. So, that means if r equal to plus minus 1, then regress two regression equations are usually different and there is a the exact relationship between the two. If regression coefficients are not plus minus 1 or if it is equal to 0, then obviously there is no relationship between the two. So, that means there are three different situations altogether. 
if plus minus 1 then there is a perfect relationship perfect association between the two if it is less than that then there is a relation but it is not perfectly related to each other however if it is equal to 0 then there is no question of association and also there is no question of causality so this is the basic background of the regression analysis so now we will explain with a, a suitable examples here so how it is exactly structure so far as the regression equation is concerned let me take a example here this is x series and this is y series so x represents 71 then this is 68 then 66 then 67 then 70 71 70 73 72 65 then 66 so 1 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so that means here n equal to 11 okay so now if you make sum then this is sum x equal to 7 5 9 so obviously x bar is equal to 7 5 9 divided by 11 which is nothing but 69 all right so now come to y structure y for 71 y is 69 for 68 y is 64 then for 66 it is 65 then it is for 67 it is 63 then 65 then this is 62 65 64 then 66 59 then 62 so obviously n is here 11 because in the very beginning i have mentioned if we will go for variance covariance correlation and regression the essential condition is that the sample observations must be same and unique if the sample observations are not same then you cannot make any association or you cannot correlate you cannot regress or you cannot covariate this is not the case when we will go for univariate setup within this particular structure for instance within this particular structure like this we we are just you are and this is x within the system and this is y within the system we are doing just our uh, assignment y to x or x to y either to regress or you can say to correlate but this is what bivariate within the bivariate if we are interested about x or we are interested about y then there is no point if this particular structure will call it a n1 and this particular structure sample operation will call it n2 then there is no point n1 should be exactly equal to n2 okay but if we really correlated between these two in that case it is mandatory n1 should be equal to n2 but in this case this particular case and this particular case n should not be exactly equal to 2 so that means for univariate analysis any univariate statistics if you look there is no point or there is no question about the sample observation uniformity because the sample observe uniform of sample observation within the system represents the structure of univariate and bivariate and you can say multivariate our objective is completely different in the case of bivariate or multivariate we just like to know how they are uh, related to each other and for that we need to have you can say information about the univariate statistics now within this setup if you are looking for univariate statistic of a particular variable then this is completely different now for another variable the univariate statistic is completely different that means altogether they are independent but when you like to integrate each other with respect to correlation, correlation regression that time this whole unit should be very similar in nature in the first case it is not mandatory but in the second case it should be mandatory yes there is a there is a certain problem uh, means issue here of course uh, if we have x1 so uh, if we have x variable and y variable i will say here you can say 1 2 3 4 5 5 up to say 10 observation another case we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 
up to you can say 8. So, now the observations 6, 7 or you can say take this is 8. Okay. So, now this is 8. So, now what we have to do? In that case, this is so far uniform statistic is concerned, you can do analysis here, we can do analysis here. But when we will apply bivariate modeling here, then in that case the system is totally inconsistent, because this is the sample observation 8 and this is the sample observation of 10. So, now this is, this is nothing but inconsistency. So, to solve this particular problem or to handle this particular issue, so what you have to do? We have to artificially create a uniform sampling. So, that means either you can reduce the sample size or increase the sample size to 10, means 10 is already there for x, but in the case of y, it is not there. So, it is only 8. So, we can extend 9 and 10 further. Okay? You have to extend 9 and 10 further. For that, either you have to explore where the information is available. If it is so, then your task is very easy, you can go ahead. But sometimes in the uh, uh, real world business, you may not have a information, but there is a standard mathematical technique through which you can fill that gap also. Here, the, the one of the standard technique is called as interpolation and extrapolation. If you apply interpolation and extrapolation, then the sample unit 8 can be extended to 10. So, in that case, you will get the uh, uniformity in the structures, then of course, you can go ahead with the solutions. So, but every time you, you can apply interpolation and extrapolation, however, there is a certain problems associated with the interpolation and extrapolation. It can uh, uh, solve your problem, you, you can get the model speed you can go for per you can go for anything etcetera, but it will affect the liability part of the model. So, the moment you will go for interpolation and extrapolation to enhance the sample size or to get the uniformity in the sample, then one of the standard problem you can face is that called as a autocorrelation, which is very complex, you know very serious and very interesting also we will discuss in detail when we will go for the autocorrelation modeling. So, right now it is not issue here. So, we just to know and in the first hand we just to know how you have to solve this particular problem. Later on when there is a additional problem or additional complexity, so far as the reliability check is concerned that time we have some other tricks how you have to eradicate that problem. So, we will discuss detail when we will go for that. Okay. So, in the meantime uh, uh, we have two observations. So, x and y, x contains this much of information, y contains this much of information. So, now uh, uh, in the first hand, uh, sample observations are similar. So, that means we can proceed further for the analysis. So, there is no issue at all. In fact, uh, sometimes uh, uh, when there is you know series of observations, uh, this is 11, okay, by look we can say that there is inconsistent and there are two variables only, then you can say that there is inconsistent. But when there is a multiple variables and multiple sample points, that time it is very difficult to observe. Yes, we have standard softwares, so we just enter the data, then you cross check it for all these variables. The moment you will put the descriptive statistics, so it will give you indication what is the observation n for all the variables and what is the mean of all the variables, what is a standard deviation, variance, uh, all these uh, you can say descriptive statistic it will give you in details. So, now with the available information x and y, so we have to, we, we need to find out x squares, we need to find out y squares, we need to find out x y, then we have to proceed for the regression coefficient. Yes, to simplify further or the structure uh, uh, because of its simpl simplicity, we can go for small x square, small y square and small x y. So, here small uh, small x square, small x square is represented as some uh, x minus x bar whole squares and small y square represents y minus y bar whole squares. Okay? So, that means, so here x bar is 69 here. So, corresponding to this y summation y is equal to 704 
so n is 11 so obviously y bar equal to 704 by 11 so which is nothing but 64 so now if we transfer it then every every item has to be transferred into x minus x bar so that means for first case it should be x minus uh, you can say 69s so now if we transfer then this structure will come to minus 1 minus 3 minus 2 then 1 2 1 4 3 minus 4 minus 3 so similarly in the second case this is in fact x okay this is in fact x so obviously we will go for x square and y square so for y it is nothing but 5 0 1 minus 1 1 minus 2 1 0 2 minus 5 then minus 2 All right. now this is x deviation format and y deviation format so now we need xy so xy of course it is 10 then 0 minus 3 then uh, my, uh, 2 1 minus 4 then 1 0 then 6 then 20 then 6 okay so similarly you will get x square and you will get y square x square represents 4 1 9 4 1 4 1 16 then 9 then 16 then 9 okay then corresponding y we have y square 25 0 1 1 1 4 1 0 4 25 4 okay so now we have x square we have y square and we have xy of course it is in deviation format so now summation xy is equal to here 39 then summation x square is equal to here 74 and summation y square is here 66 okay so now we have to see how is the regression coefficient how is the correlation coefficient okay. so now given information with you know, detail about its statistics univariate statistic and bivariate statistics that is with respect to variance and covariance we have to proceed further for regression and also its correlation coefficient so now we have to uh, different uh, 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 equations y minus y bar equal to b y x into x minus x bar and other side x minus x bar is equal to b x y into y minus y bar all right so now uh, uh, first of all we calculate what is b y x b y x equal to summation x y y okay uh, we can start with the covariance of x y by sigma x into sigma y which is nothing but co uh, covariance of uh, sorry covariance of c this is sigma y by sigma x covariance of x y divided by sigma x into sigma y into sigma y by sigma x so sigma y sigma y cancel so covariance of x y by sigma square x all right so which is nothing but we will simplify it is nothing but n summation x y minus summation x into summation y divided by n summation x square minus sum x whole squares okay if we we'll further simplify then it is something summation x y by summation x square so that means that means summation x y is here uh, summation x y is here uh, 39 so 39 divided by summation x square is 74 years so this is what the regression coefficient all right so now uh, your equation will be y minus y bar is equal to 74 into x minus x bar in other words y minus y bar y bar is here 64 is equal to 7 uh, sorry 39 by 74 39 by 74 into x minus x bar that is 69 that is 69 so now if you will simplify then this will be simply in the format of y equal to alpha plus beta x alpha plus beta x alpha is and beta are supporting component similarly in the case of x x minus x bar 
it is not but x minus 69 into bx by y minus 64. So, what is bxy? bxy is equal to summation xy upon summation y squares. So, this is nothing but 39 by summation y square is 66. So, x minus 69 into 39 by 66 into y minus 64. If you simplify again further, so you will get in the format of y equal to alpha plus beta x. So, now here alpha and beta are very supporting factors. Beta is the slope of this particular line. So, beta is the real structure where it means it is the main regression coefficients what we call it is b y x and b x y. Alpha will be just giving uh, just you can say give you the indication where the line exactly starts. Let us take a case here. Whatever information we have since we are going for y on x or x on y then obviously the movement is like this. If we really put it here x and y then if you really plot these uh, you can see all these points then of course you get to know how is the set. Usually if you really plot then the structure will be like this this will be like this. Okay. So, now for every units for every sample units 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this then obviously there is a some y observations. So, now your movement will be like this if you will connect each and every point then the movement will be like this. Okay. So, within the movements we like to know how is your path that means this path is called as a line of the best fit this is what we call it a y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x this is the estimated equation which we derive from y into y bar equal to b y x into x minus x bars. The detail calculation procedure we get to know when we will go for the exact econometric modeling and regression modeling. We are not discussing about the detail issue about the uh, structure and setup. So, we are just briefing what is all about regression analysis. Once we will enter to this you know the structure of bivariate and you can say multivariate uh, in a you can say research angle or you can say any practical pro problem angle then obviously you can get to know how complexity is it and how it is derived really. So, structure so now we will summarize this entire concept what is all about bivariate regression modeling and what is about the uh, structure about variance covariance correlation regression. So, this the basic objective behind bivariate modeling is that we like to know what is the association between the two variables. So, that means the first condition is that in a particular system problem setup we must have a two variables this is first condition and for you know particularly covariance correlation and regression then uh, the second important point is that uh, both the variables have same number of observation if one variable exceeds or you can say less than that of other variables then obviously the structure is inconsistent and you cannot proceed further. So, now so first condition is that you must have two variables in the systems and all the variables means both the variables have same number of observations. So, then we like to know what is the degree of association between the two variables for that you can apply covariance you can apply correlation, but correlation is better than covariance because it is unitless measurement while covariance is not at all unitless measurement. So, obviously, correlation is better choice than the covariance, although the, co the calculation of correlation is a little bit complex. So, now if your objective is to know the degree of association between the two variables, then correlation is the best technique for that. However, if you like to know what is the cause and effect relationship between the two variables, then of course, you have to go for regression analysis. So, regression analysis basically give you indication whether uh, it is x influence y or y influence x. So, in that case we have two standard equations for y on x it is y minus y bar into b y x upon x minus x bar and similarly for x on y x minus x bar into b x y upon y minus y bar. So, the issue is the to know the regression coefficient because it will give you indication how the path is all about because the moment you will get regression coefficient v y x and v x y then it will give you the indication of what is the value of correlation coefficient 
the square root square of correlation coefficient that is coefficient determinations and that will give you the weightage of that particular relationships. If the uh, value of that R square is very high and close to 1, then they are perfectly related to each other or the degree of association is very, very high and if it is very, very high, then obviously the prediction and forecasting structure is very, uh, very reliable and also very easy. So, now the R, R will give you the indication about the movement of very movement between these two variables and their association also its causality. So, now with this we have to end this particular class. So, next class we will dis discuss detail about the basic statistic before you enter into the econometric modeling. So, that is the case of probability and you can say hypothesis testing. So, in the next in the next lectures we will discuss the probability and hypothesis then we will proceed to the multivariate econometric model. With this we will close this class. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.